Hey, 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 man, nice you out there running the circle and put down that can of warm cells in that big fat old lady you're working at that young for you to eat dinner. This is Bobby that brain here, and I'm in your head, and I'm online at dot com. So get with it, or I'll move in next door to you. You won't like it, because you like your wife, I guess you would like it. All right, we are back, and we are joined by Nate, David Marquez of the NWA. I want to welcome you to In Your Head. Well, thank you very much. I'm real glad to be here. Excellent. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's lovely in Southern California, bright skies, probably about 80 degrees, and couldn't be happier. Excellent. Well, everybody know you get the, you check out nwawrestling.com. You can check out uh, bvdvd.com, or you can check out uh, bigvisionentertainment.com. And you can uh, get a lot of NWA DVDs are on there. And uh, you got the the new show, wrestling uh, NWA Wrestling Showcase. It's on the Colors Network. Uh, I think you get that if you have a Dish, Dish TV. It's on Wednesday nights. You want to uh, tell everybody what exactly that is, what what you'd see like if uh, you tune into NWA Showcase? Yeah, you know, when they tune into the show, and right now we're having a time slot uh, jumble, uh, I think they're going to reschedule us uh, an hour earlier starting uh, next week or the week after uh, 8 o'clock uh, Eastern. So that would make it 5 o'clock Pacific with a replay. Uh, and I don't know what the replay is, but Wednesday nights, uh, what we do is we present professional wrestling. Uh, sure, there's everything else that you uh, think of when it comes to a pro wrestling program with the characters and the antics and whatnot, but we really try to uh, surface around wrestling competition championships, everything that you know, pro wrestling is meant to be. Uh, uh, you know, other people have different notions of what wrestling is, but in my mind, in my liking, uh, a good old-fashioned wrestling show uh, real well. Yeah, speaking of champions, uh, you get the world heavyweight champion is uh, Scrap Iron Adam Pearce. Uh, what are your opinions on him? Well, I've known Adam for a very long time from the Midwest, uh, uh, I started a, a company in late 97, early 98 with Harley Race, Gordon Soley, and Carl Lauer called World Legion Wrestling out of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, Harley still runs the company now as World Legion Wrestling. And uh, at the time, Adam was up into the Chicago and Milwaukee areas as a young guy, uh, working with guys like Carmine Desperado and Ed Schumann and people up there with uh, the Gold Bond Mafia with Cabana and and whatnot, and uh, Punk, and uh, yeah, Danny Dominion and Ace Steel and all those guys running around. Uh, even way back then, I knew that Adam had it, the, the it factor everybody talks about. He was awfully cocky. He was awfully young. Uh, and imagine Adam Pierce today, but just uh, 12, 10 to 12 years ago, you know, <laughs> the same piss and vinegar just coming out of a little guy, uh, a younger guy. And, uh, you know, you certainly want to smack him in the in the face real quick and say, hey, sit down. But uh, luckily, it's got him pretty far. I think today he is probably the quintessential professional wrestler, if that makes any sense, mm-hmm. um, in, in, in a classic vein. And uh, he knows how to do his job, and I think he does it really well. Now, uh, obviously, NWA has, like, uh, you know, a long history behind it. Um does that, uh, that's, it's more special to you to be like commentator, be involved in, in the NWA since it's, uh, you know, the company that has such a uh, history? Well, sure it is. Uh, the, uh, uh, the public today, especially the internet public, uh, community, it's, it's a different vibe than a live crowd and, and who we're trying to get back in, bring the, the average folk back into wrestling. Uh, to me, the National Wrestling Alliance has never went away. Uh, it may have went away from television for a time, and the championship in some people's eyes, because it wasn't necessarily on a on a Ric Flair or uh, or Sting. Of course, it became Sting again later on in, in time here in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, we had no true control over uh, over that piece. But uh, you know, the NWA to me is very special. And especially around the world, I've had the opportunity in the last two years to to travel the globe and uh, meet just regular old folk that uh, respect the NWA and remember it for what it is and uh, what it's always been. So, yeah, and especially being able to be brought up by a guy like Gordon Soley. Uh, I worked with him one-on-one uh, for close to a year towards the end of his life with World Legion Wrestling. 
and he was our commentator down there, and uh, he owned a piece of the company. And um, I learned an awful lot. Uh, my background going into wrestling was television production, and uh, it was really great to work with a, with a professional like Gordon and uh, understand different types of uh, production value and, and, and uh, television responsibility, uh, which is probably why I'm so what a lot of people like to call me old school, uh, it's because who I was brought up around, and and the NWA, uh, to me is it really does mean a lot, as it does to many others in the world. There's a again, there's a large internet community that it, for some reason they want to downplay the role, and especially the current role of the NWA in the world of wrestling. Um, but around the world, that those three letters mean an awful lot. Mm-hmm. Now, was he somebody you also kind of pat in your style after? Since you said you know people uh, call you old school, uh, the, the way you commentate matches. Where you interview people? Well, well, yes and no, and it was just also the way I was brought up in life. Um, I'm not a fan of getting yelled at, so I don't like to yell at people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't like, just when you're watching wrestling today, I understand creating uh, creating a scene and, and getting the people into what you're trying to do. But in my liking, I really like to present it as a true sports event, uh, you don't hear Al Michaels on television just screaming at you. Uh, growing up, not just, aside from a, a, a wrestling standpoint, you know, growing up I was a huge fan of, uh, of Walt Disney the Man mm-hmm. and, and presenting him being a presenter on his own television show and, and explaining to you all the wonderful things that might be coming your way, uh, especially in the late 60s, uh, early 70s, where well, I was growing up in the, in the mid-70s, but seeing those reruns of Walt on television explaining to you these fantastic things that are at Disneyland, and then me living in the Los Angeles area, you know, and you go down there and you get to see it for reals, I try to bring that type of an element of a, of a host uh, into the program to get the people inside of what, we're, uh, of what we're trying to do, trying to present it the right way without just throwing it at you, saying, you know, damn it, swallow this. This is what you've you got to like. Well, I'll present it, and if you like it, Great. If you don't, fantastic. But the show's not going to stop. Same thing if, uh, in the way of a uh, of a Howard Cosell, where you know you can close your eyes and try. And, and Gordon was a master of this as well. And just pretend it's radio, for example, and try to just paint a picture of uh, of what's going on and getting the people to understand uh, what you're trying to get across. Again, without screaming at them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never liked it when my mom and dad yelled at me, and when I'm watching television now, uh, the, the, the few programs that I do watch, uh, you know, news, even children's shows now, I have uh, little nieces that run around a lot and watch even public television, and all it is is screaming at you. So, you know, call it a gimmick, call it what you want, I'm doing the opposite. Um, now, there's always a famous story about uh, Gordon Soley. He actually got in the ring and took some of the moves, like uh, the figure four, and he talked about the different uh, the, the points of, of like uh, pressure. I used to remember him saying that back in the day. Like, um, Have you ever gotten in the ring yourself and taken any of these moves? <laughs> no, I've never had a, had a thought to get into the ring and, and do any of that <laughs> stuff. I've always been a backstage guy. Um, uh, I think that's one of the reasons for my longevity, too, is that uh, I never went in there and tried to challenge anybody. Um, uh, we'll have other people who might want to do that. I remember Larry Medicic, too, up in St. Louis, showing me tapes of him doing that, I think with the Bon Erics. Um, yeah, there's there's a place for that, but I don't think I belong in there. Mm-hmm. Are we happy to hear that uh, Goran Soley is going to be in the, uh, in the WWE Hall of Fame? Sure, you know, any Hall of Fame, no matter what it is, and no matter what the uh, definition of the thing is or the purpose of it is, it's always special to be recognized. I remember at uh, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and I want to say this is in 97, I could be wrong, at a Cauliflower Alley Club, um, it was the 50th anniversary of the end. Okay, so it was 98, I'm sorry, because this is the 60th anniversary of the NWA, uh, as we know it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gordon was recognized there, and Jim Ross was the person who uh, who uh, presented him with the award. And seeing the interaction between uh, Jim Ross and uh, and Gordon and me, you know, just being in the middle of that, it was a special time. Um, I do know that uh, firsthand that 
that Gordon was not the biggest Vince McMahon fan. Uh, he was always vocal about that for whatever reason. Um, I don't I don't know the, the the main reasons behind it, but I'm sure it has to do with what people call Black Sunday and WTBS and the WWF going on uh, TBS, yeah. taking the Georgia Championship Wrestling spot. But, uh, yeah, Gordon was not necessarily a true fan, but seeing as the WWE is the echelon in professional wrestling today, uh, I'm sure if he were alive, he would have been more than happy and gracious to accept the uh, the honor. And uh, I really do miss the guy. I wish he was around today because, God, I, everybody knows I, I sure could use him. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I think it would be a real neat thing to see Gordon put in there and this generation to understand who a Gordon solely is. And hopefully it will, you know, trickle down to Lance Russell and Bob Cottle and uh, mm-hmm. even Tony Schiavone, you know, and David Crockett and people like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think Ross would be the guy to, to induct him? Or, or should be the guy? Oh, oh I, I think he will. Um, uh, I know that Jim and and, uh, and Gordon had a pretty good relationship. Jim, uh, Gordon used to talk about him an awful lot when we were uh, sitting around putting things together. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think so, and I think it's appropriate. Uh, I, I don't think Gene Okerlund would be the right person to induct him. <laughs> we we got a caller here on the line. Who is this? Hi, I'm Ricky from TNA University, Quincy. Oh, I know. I just, yeah. I just want to know your thoughts on the upcoming TNA uh, lockdown pay per view. Uh, do you know? Do you want to know my thoughts on the <laughs> lockdown pay per view? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, if you know. Well, are you listening to the show live? We got a. Well, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fine program. I've been to several of the lockdown shows when I was at New Japan Pro Wrestling for about five years. I was the vice president for them, and uh, I structured the original deal with New Japan and TNA back in the beginning. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure it's a fine show. Uh, I, if, I, I don't really follow it, so I think the main event, if I'm correct, is that Kurt Angle and Samoa? Yeah. Okay, that should supposedly, be a fine match. Yeah, well, supposedly it's going to be in some type of, uh, it's going to be like a, an MMA match, is, is what they're saying now. Well, you know, Joe's pretty versed in that. Samoa, uh, from the Anoki Dojo, the days that he spent there with us, Joe took MMA uh, three times a week there and uh, stayed all day long and made people tap. And I saw the strength and power of Joe from a MMA standpoint. He could hold his own. You know, he, uh, he and Justin McCulley and Guido Ortiz are very good friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they all goof off with each other that way. They, they all, you know, spar and roll around. So uh, if there's anything on that card, and granted, I don't know much about it, that's the one I do know about. And I would be interested in seeing that. Um, you know, back to uh, NWA and their champion. Uh, what did you think about the match where Adam Pearce actually won the title in Puerto Rico versus uh, Brent Albright? It was like the, well, the you know, that was the, that the was a goofy situation all the way around. Um, Brian Danielson beat Adam Pearce in the semifinals match in uh, Vancouver, and uh, you know, then he had this eye injury, and we were kind of stuck. We didn't know what to do. Uh, we didn't know whether just to uh, award Brent Albright the championship. And Brent didn't just want that either. He wanted to win it the right way. Uh, Brian was out of the picture, and the board of directors got together, uh, all five of them, and uh, and Bob Trovich, the executive director, and decided that Adam was going to be the man there. And then we really wanted uh, Brian to participate as well, so we invited him to be an enforcer referee. Uh, of course, there was uh, a controversial ending there, and and Brian came in with an eye patch and made the uh, made the count. Uh, you know, it's always tough to be there, but Bob Trovich was there to make the final decision, and Adam Pierce was awarded the title. Uh, the people of Puerto Rico really liked it, and it actually uh, allowed the NWA to be reintroduced to the island, and we're back associated with the IWA from a sanctioning standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's been a hell of a ride since then, and Adam and Albright are still feuding, and you'll see that each and every Wednesday on the Showcase program. Uh who knows what's going to come out of it, but the, it was a it was a pretty high tense night. Uh, I think there's a, a video floating around on the internet that we did a report on that night where uh, Albright's not too happy. He's still not happy with us, and I hear it every time I see him. And I think when him and Adam actually get a grasp of each other and go into the ring, it's uh, it's not going to be a pretty sight. And he he claims he's uh, the best wrestler alive. A lot of people online, a lot of uh, fans agree. Uh, what, what what would you say about that? Oh, 
Well, who's that? Brian Danielson. Brian. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been lucky to know Brian for an awfully long time now, and uh, I think Brian is an excellent talent and probably one of the best on earth. There's many others that you can put in that category as well, uh, for many different reasons. Um, I would, you know, I would really put T.J. Perkins in that category as well. I'm not sure if everybody knows who T.J. is. He competes with us. Uh, you might know him as an alter ego. Uh, we, that's out of the bag already, so there's no secret there. He's a Puma, um, mm-hmm. and uh, T.J. Is, to me is one of the most uh, outstanding talents out there uh, in any weight class. Um, and then you know when you look around the world, uh, Fergal Devitt and uh, from Ireland, who's who's competing in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and uh, even uh, Seishi Nakamura, you know, and uh, and a lot of those younger uh, New Japan talents. Uh, and granted, I'm talking about people that I know uh, pretty well. Uh, but uh, Brian, he's up there. You know, if there was a top ten, he'd probably be in in the in the high percentage of that, the top five. Mm-hmm. Uh- did you do anything else, Ricky? Anything uh, t- uh, NWA related? Well, thanks for calling, in, Ricky. Uh, we got Ryan here on the line. Hey, you just mentioned Shinsuke Nakamura is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And I agree with you. Did you um, catch his his winning the title in NJPW? I did. I saw the match actually on YouTube. Um, I thought it was a fantastic match. Is there any chance that you will be getting him now that you're uh, now that the NWA and NJPW are have a relationship again to uh, get him and Adam Pearce into the ring against each other? Well, you know that's a hope, and the matchmakers and Trobich and the, the board of directors are really working on that right now. The uh, American uh, liaison to New Japan, Tiger Hattori, uh, is working with Bob Trobich and some of the other promoters, and we're working on dates on trying to get him over here. Uh, for some of our larger arena shows that we've been staging across the country for the last two years. Um, I think you will see Nakamura back here. The the relationship has already started where uh, Carl the Machine Gun Anderson is now competing over there regularly for the next few months, and uh, we'll see who they're going to bounce back our way. Nakamura being their champion, uh, I'm not sure what his schedule is going to allow just yet, but I hope by at least the fall we'll start a program with bringing more New Japan talent to the States and on our television. And uh, I know that Nakamura and and, and probably, yeah, I'd say about 60% of the Japanese talent would love to be called the NWA World Title because in that country, those three men, letters are, uh, are, are more than legendary. They're very respected there. Anything else, Ryan? Uh, just curious what your opinion is of Sean Waltman's uh, frequent attempts to capture the title from Adam Pierce. Uh, one more time, that one broke up there. Uh, he wouldn't know uh, what he thought about uh, Sean Waltman's uh, attempts to uh, tr- try to get the NWA title from Adam Pierce. Well, you know, again, Sean is a fantastic competitor in my mind. Uh, I think he and Adam had it started with the NWA Heritage title before uh, Adam was the world champion. Uh, uh, Waltman has been wanting to prove to everybody that he's not just some, uh, you know, fly-by-night type guy or a has-been. Uh, he's a very young man still. He's only 35 years old, and he has an awful lot to uh, give. Uh, he had some great outings, but, you know, being plagued and with injury, uh, that's been uh, Sean's fault throughout his end, his, his current NWA career. Uh but I think that the feud was a was a fantastic one. It went on for, I want to say, six or seven months. I could be wrong with that. Before he went down to Mexico full t- full time, uh, the last time I spoke to uh, uh, Sean in person was in uh, Australia during Thanksgiving when we did a tour down there, and uh, you know he he was in very good spirits and very good health, and uh, told me then that he still has aspirations of being the NWA World Champion. Let's see what happens when. Uh, in the future, uh, especially with these other higher-profile talents uh, being scheduled to come into the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got another call here. We got uh, Brian on the line. Yeah, um, this is kind of a general question I have about the actual. Now, the the NWA that you've worked for. Now, this is the same, and I always get messed up on the lineage with it as far as its history. Is this, now, this is the same NWA that used to be part of WCW 
and there's only one NWA in existing now. Is that is that right, or is there multiple ones? Because didn't it used to be technically oh, oh, part did. of TNA? That's a very good question, and for newer fans of the business, it's an excellent question, and I'd love to answer that. The NWA is a sanctioning body. So what it is is that promotions agree to recognize a champion and certain talents as top talents in, in the, in the uh, promotion. There is no one NWA... Uh, for example, you know, if you look at a WWE or a TNA, there are, uh, as everybody knows, storylines, let's say that. In the NWA, currently, on a national level, there are, uh, there are feuds, but they don't necessarily take the soap opera approach of, uh, of evolving. Uh, it's, it's very competitive and competition based, and there's goals towards every fighter when you're looking at, at, at the whole picture. So we have national champions and international champions. We have a world champion, a world junior champion, a world's ladies champion, world tag team champions. We have a national heavyweight champion, a uh, North American heavyweight champion, and a North American tag champion, and a Canadian title that we recognize as the board of directors as our top titles. Then if you want to think of uh, and compare it to a franchise, for example, like uh, I dare say a fast food restaurant, but that's probably the best thing to do. Uh, promotions have the opportunity to link themselves to the intellectual property, which is our championships and brands that have been around in its current form for 60 years. They have their own local champions, which become contenders for the, the larger regional and then the international titles. So it, it, at times it can be very confusing. WCW was a, well, ter, uh, Jim Crockett Promotions was a member of the National Wrestling Alliance. They just had more of a public, uh, more, more of a high-profile uh, uh, persona going for them at the time with the television they had and whatnot. And so they showcased the world title more and those top-tier talents that were then, you know, basically dispatched to all the local regions, uh, just as we're trying to reestablish today uh, on a bigger scale. Um, but when WCW, uh, when Jim Crockett Promotions was sold to WCW, uh, they were still a member of the NWA. But, you know, when you get into situations like that and you have a big corporation uh, trying to work with, and, and granted they're a media company, trying to work with regional wrestling promoters, and they don't necessarily speak the same language, uh, some people feel that their britches are bigger than they are. And uh, granted, I was not around during that time, but our executive director, Bob Trovich, was. And in fact, he's one of the people who negotiated the sale of uh, Crockett to Turner. Um, and he dealt with this whole deal all the way down the line. But when they decided to leave the organization in the mid-90s, I want to say 94, 93, 94, I, can't mess, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. That's when the NWA World title appeared on WWF television with Ric Flair as the real world's champion. And if you remember the title being pixelized on TV. That was because yeah. the NWA came forward with Bob Trovich, and there was some legal things involved there, and that's why that happened. Um, modern day, uh, after the ECW incident with Shane Douglas, uh, which started ECW, see, you got to remember, the NWA has started so many prominent promotions. Uh, WWF was a part of the NWA. Uh, of course, New Japan, Old Japan, CMLL in Mexico, uh, the NWA at one time was it. Now today, we're still a large company, but we're just not that major force anymore because things have changed so much and, and we're not on that national or international scale when it comes to major television and major personalities. We're just now dabbling into reestablishing that. Uh, so TNA, for example... TNA was not a member versus WCW, who was a member. Uh, Jerry and Jeff Jarrett created a licensing agreement with the National Wrestling Alliance to license the intellectual property, which is the brand, the logo that everybody knows, and the world championships as a way to uh, what they felt they needed 
to add credibility to what they were doing with the lineage of the championships in building TNA. Uh, our relationship with them lasted for five years, and uh, last summer is when we, uh, you know, we agreed to go our separate ways, uh, allowing us to do what we're doing now. Uh, something that's very important, as what Bob Trovich says, uh, guide our own destiny. Um, so I, I hope that helps you. I know that was a little long way. Yeah, yeah, I, I rarely really get... yeah, makes it, yeah. Because I used to be under the misconception that the NWA just became WCW. That, uh, that I didn't know that they were actually two. Well, that's for a long what time. that's what people would like you to think, but that's not what happened at all. You have to remember the NWA is the only company that has gone from beginning to end. And it never stopped. And it's the only original one still around when you really look at it. The WWF in its uh, original form is gone. WCW is gone. ECW is gone. But the NWA is still here. That's one reason why we choose not to create a new championship belt. Because it, that, that icon as the precious 10 pounds of gold, as people like to refer to it as, uh, that's why we keep it. We could have totally updated it. We could have made a beautiful modern-day championship. But why? It means so much to an awful lot of people, so much that Ric Flair appeared on television just the other night with his version of it. Mm-hmm. That was you know, a great moment on, uh, on TV. It sure was. You should, I, the, the, the phone and the email didn't stop. They're like, your belt is on television. <laughs> and I turned it on and brought a great smile to my face to see Ric Flair holding that again. Uh, it, it means an awful lot that, you know, that the people at the WWE would allow him to do that, knowing that the NWA is around. Do they consider us a threat? Absolutely not. I know that. We, we're very conscious of our uh, place in the world of wrestling. We know what we provide and who we uh, cater to. Um, they know who they are. Uh, and just the, the, the homage that they just paid there to the organization meant an awful lot to us. Did it put us over in a major way? Did it change the, the way of maybe the masses thinking of what the NWA is? Probably not. But for the people on the inside and our true fans who really follow what the NWA does, I know that meant an awful lot. Uh, do you think uh, uh, the NWA itself is better or uh, worse off that uh, the title isn't with TNA anymore? Well... I think it's better because we have the opportunity to create our own future. Uh, when we were with TNA, it, it was a business relationship uh, that did not necessarily allow us to have much input in the direction of where the championships were going. And uh, towards the end there, it was pretty tough. And you have to remember, the majority of the members who are a part of the NWA, whether they, whether they draw 50 people or 700 people to their to their events. Does, that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. The, the, the fact is that we're entertaining people, and those people are happy. Uh, but the budgets and the financials behind those smaller companies, which make up our membership, you know, those folks cannot necessarily av- afford a sting or uh, a, a different high profile. Like, let's say Kevin Nash, if he became the world champion, and he's going to ask for umpteenth thousands of dollars to perform, Mm -hmm. you know, on our level, we cannot necessarily afford that. So just to be in control of our own intellectual property, I think we were were better off uh, being uh, uh, on our own uh, versus being in association with TNA. Although uh, I must say my dealings with TNA, 80% of the times were fantastic. And uh, the talent that's there I think is great. Um, I know an awful lot of them personally. And uh, I, I don't wish anything bad on TNA by any stretch of the imagination because keeping operations open, no matter what size or what caliber, uh, it just helps this business. And if they went away, you know, that would really hurt the rest of us. Mm-hmm. That's another place uh, for people to work, another wrestling promotion that's on TV. If people see wrestling on TV, they're more likely to come to a, a wrestling that's uh you know, local to them, there. if the NWA comes uh, near them. Yeah, I always they think did, that the better right wrestling does on TV, yeah, the, the better it does, like, uh, at house shows. or. Uh, or at, That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, and I believe they did really right for the NWA uh, during a period of time. All the millions you hear about TNA pouring into their company, you got to remember what the centerpiece of that company was. It was our property. 
Right. So every every bit that they put into TNA, in my mind, they put into the NWA brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a caller here. He's calling in from Ireland, uh, P.O.D. Uh, who do you think was the least deserving NWA champion of all time? I didn't catch that one. I apologize. What was that? <laughs> uh, he wouldn't know who the least deserving uh, NWA champion was. Least deserving? Yeah. Uh, of, I dare say what era, um, and everybody is due their, their time, and they had the championship for whatever reason. I, I don't know if I could necessarily answer that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's a tough one um, because, again, I wasn't around for, for everything. Uh, and for the purposes at the time, everything probably made sense. Yeah, exactly. So I don't really have an opinion on that. I apologize. Uh, is there anything else, P.O.D.? No, that's it. Thanks. All right, thanks for okay, calling Okay, say hi to Paul Tracy over there. <laughs> is he playing the... Uh, playing the, the writer theme. theme for us. It was a very strange caller there. Uh, you know, another NWA champion that uh, is a lot of fun to uh, to watch wrestle, especially if you get the chance to see him live, is uh, the uh, junior heavyweight champion that'd be Mike Quackenbush. Uh, what, what would you what would you say like uh, you know getting to see watch him work live? What, what is that like? What are your opinions? Well, on? you know, Mike's really quick. They call him Lightning for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've had the opportunity to watch Mike several times, and he. Uh, he always amazes me when he's in there, uh, always coming up with some sort of innovative way to to change up a hold or a move. Uh, I've been in Mexico with Mike, uh, of course, here in the United States and a couple of this, uh, the areas. Uh, I wish I could have been with the night that he beat Tiger Mask because I think that would have been an amazing uh, match. I've not even seen that match. I, I really want to get it so I can put it on television. Uh, Schumann has to hurry up and send that to me. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Mike, I think, is an outstanding talent, and I'm very happy to have him a part of the organization. Mm-hmm. And he's not, uh, he might not be a typical um, uh, cruiserweight guy where you think is, he might be fast, but he might not be doing uh, a lot of flips and dives. He does a lot of uh, mat wrestling and uh, very unique holds. Yeah, he's very versed in pro wrestling. Uh, and, you know, I dare say styles, but. It, I've seen him do some amazing lucha things. He had a match on our television program with Cassandro the Exotic, which is a fantastic match. Um, I would like to see him versus TJ Perkins down the line. I think that would be a great match. Maybe even him and Rocky Romero. Uh, you know, it, it, I think it would be really cool to see Mike a little more, uh, a little more uh, uh, higher profile in our in yeah. our uh, in our organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a lot of fun to see. We we get to see him live at the uh, the fan fest last year in Charlotte. Yes, which uh, I know you, you were there. Yeah, I was. It was a great time. You know, you get to catch up with people. I saw a lot of guys that I hadn't seen in a long time. Now I, I'm not like buddy buddy friends with all of them. I'm acquaintances from over the years. Not like all of those guys were together. Uh, but it was great to actually meet people. Like I started a friendship there with Gary Hart, who just yeah. unfortunately passed. Uh, and Gary and I have, have pretty much been speaking every other week or every third week uh, since that, that uh, uh, reunion. And I did a couple of cards in, uh, in Texas where uh, we tried to meet up, but schedules just didn't allow, but we always talked on the phone. And he was a fantastic resource, much like Gordon, to bounce things off of and uh, get a true unbiased opinion. Yeah, he's uh, just a really nice guy. Uh, we had him on the show, and we met him at the at the fan fest. Got a little interview with him there, and uh, I think it's like it. Um, it was good that he got a chance to to be on uh, both the um, the world class DVDs, especially the one from uh, Big Vision, which I think oh, yeah. is probably the best one of the two because it kind of he um, gave him like a it kind of opened him up to like a whole new generation of people, and he really got a chance to to speak his mind. You could really see like uh, he had a great mind for wrestling. Yes. Uh, we yes, got a caller. I enjoy, I've, I've enjoyed all my conversations with him. Yeah. Uh, we got a caller here. We got Dwayne on the line. Yeah, I wanted to ask him about uh, Blue Demon Jr.'s relationship with the NWA. Well, Blue Demon has been a headliner with us probably for about, oh, I want to say about a year and a half. He's helped us draw some of our biggest crowds. Uh, you know, we had thousands in Texas in some of our larger shows. Uh 
Blue Demon, I think, is a fantastic talent who is extremely marketable. It also helps that he has a licensing agreement with the Coca-Cola company with the Full Throttle brand. Um, he's a uh, very easy to work with, and we've just named him the president of NWA Mexico, where he's going to establish basically the same NWA system we have up here uh, around, well, actually around the world. But down there, since that country is so large, uh, setting up a territorial system much like what you know here in the States in Mexico using international talent, allowing our world title to be just that. Uh, I enjoy working with Blue. Uh, he's a, a true professional, and uh, he strives for the best. Uh, he's a really good guy. Mm-hmm. Cool. Anything else, Dwayne? Yeah, are you a fan of Jimmy Jacobs? I'm sorry? Are you a fan of Jimmy Jacobs? Jimmy Jacobs? Yeah, I like Jimmy Jacobs. Yeah. <sighs> Awesome. Uh, All right. Okay. Hmm. Bit of a running theme on the show, I can see. But anyway, Jimmy Jacobs. (laughs) Yes, uh, I happen to not be such a big fan of him, but no. (laughs) Oh, he. You know, I only worked with him at uh, uh, WSX. Uh, I really not worked one on one with him uh, much, but that 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 couple of weeks there was uh, was an interesting time. Uh, I get I get kidded with a lot. Uh, with some of the clothes I wear. and For example, Matt Classic, which everyone knows now is Colt Cabana, that blue uh, sweat, zip-up sweater he wears, mm-hmm. well, that's, that I probably shouldn't be admitting it, but that was, <laughs> that's mine. Uh, I was wearing it that day, and I put it on him. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, Jimmy, on the same hand, he has a, a nice taste for uh, sweaters and whatnot, just like I do, so <laughs> we kind of bonded. <laughs> <laughs> Now, speaking of Wrestle Society X, uh, you said you worked for them. Uh, uh, you're also telling us uh, before that you did some work for um, XPW. Oh, sure. Yeah. I've uh, been with Kevin Kleinrock for probably about, uh, uh, I want to say since 99. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've directed, uh, my. like I said, I come from my, my, when wrestling is bad, I turn to television. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, I met Kevin at about 99. And I would sporadically come in in the beginning to shoot certain things and, and help edit and whatnot here in California when I moved back from uh, Springfield, Missouri uh, at that time. And then uh, they gave me the shot to direct some things, uh, some of the television episodes and whatnot. Uh, I think my biggest claim to fame is that I directed the uh, Free Fall show where uh, Vic Grimes fell so far, 40 yeah. feet or somewhat, with New Jack. New Jack, yeah. Uh, I was the multi-camera director, the live switch, uh, in the truck. What and, was like? Uh, what was it like when that happened? Were you like, uh, were you just afraid, like you know, something really bad happened to the Well, uh, at at first, because you have to remember, I'm looking at. Well, I think we shot that with five or six cameras. Mm-hmm. So I have five different angles of it that I'm looking at, and uh, you know, and I also have a camera up to get New Jack's reaction. Right. And then when you see the reaction versus the land and then having operators and production assistants on the floor where it happened, and then they're talking to you on the headset. You have uh, a Black and Kevin Kleinrock on the headset, and, you know, and you're trying to keep composure. And, and of course, at times, I'm not a good fit with, with uh, hard hardcore or, or any type of extreme type of wrestling, and I'm I'm a broadcast type person first. Uh, it's very difficult for me to be that sensationalized producer mm-hmm. of putting a camera in a victim's face, right? Trying to get and kind the, of invading the actions and just of like, everything, and make sure you get all the all the falls on camera at the same time. You're like you know kind of worried that this guy's hurt or. Oh, absolutely! You know that's that, that's tough. And how do you cover that type of event live, and how it plays out? Mm-hmm. You know, right at that moment, we knew something had happened. I believe Patrick Hernandez was the uh, was the was the referee in that, and he's looking right at me in the close up camera, and he knows where to look and how to talk to me because he knows I have communication with everybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, we we pretty much shut that show down right after that. I believe the ambulance showed up pretty quick. Yeah, they called. They like cleared out the building. And we really cleared the building out. And I think if you watch the tape, the ring announcer starts cursing and telling people to get out pretty quick, mm-hmm. um, that you've uh, got your money's worth, get out. Right. 
And then, you know, New Jack stayed up there. And when he came down, he went in his face with no regard. And, you know, and, and how do you cover that, especially with an individual like New Jack when you never know what's going to truly happen? Right. So it, it, was, a, it was a high tense uh, situation there. Uh, that was probably one of the more higher, uh, higher tension moments I've ever had in this business. Uh, we got a caller here on the line. Who is this? Uh, hi, this is Jeff Capo, uh, NWA referee. Oh, 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 hey, Jeff. Hi, David. How are you doing? I'm okay. You could have just called me on the phone. You didn't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> this makes this seem a little more important. What's up, Jeff? Uh, yeah, well, I just, well, I wanted to say, I wanted to thank, personally, thank Mr. Dave Martinez and everybody at the NWA for giving me the opportunities that I have had. Uh, the last seven years, I've been obviously working with Rick O'Brien closely in NWA Virginia. And uh, this past August, I had the uh, the rare opportunity to be a referee as part of the NWA World Title Tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's been fantastic. Um, I grew up with the NWA uh, as a young man. I'm <laughs> not as young as I am as, as I'd like to be, but... Uh, uh, I've had a real, a real thrill with it, and it's been a, a real pleasure to be working with the, the NWA and, the, and to see the change. Um, and I think David uh, can agree from back in the annual meeting in Nashville a couple of years back. I think that's where the, uh, the real changes in the NWA first started to take place, and uh, it has brought us to where we are today. Well, that's true. That those early meetings actually in Winnipeg, Canada, was when I started seeing changes. Uh, with the organization and uh, where it had been and listening to the inner workings, which unfortunately I'm bound to talk about, uh, uh, bound actually like gag. So there's certain things from the organization I can't talk about because it's proprietary. But the, the, uh, the way I saw the organization being ran when I was with New Japan Pro Wrestling, that's how I got back into the NWA, by the way. I was uh, Mr. Inoki, Antonio Inoki's proxy because he was the member, and I was a vice president, and I was in North America, so it just made sense for me to uh, go and attend the meetings. And uh, in Winnipeg, Canada, that was where I met Jerry Jarrett for the first time in person. We were learning more about the TNA relationship. I was trying to foster the New Japan talent trade. And then I saw an awful lot of people who who had, who what I want to say has had, because a lot of them are no longer with the organization, um, fantastic intentions and and goodwill to professional wrestling and wanting to do it, uh, but unfortunately they didn't have the capabilities of doing it. And uh, whether they bowed out gracefully or was asked to leave, uh, it was all for a common goal of trying to get the brand into a more, more of a a better light and recognized as the best of our ability as a credible organization with a fantastic heritage and uh, and, and a bright future. So uh, we've had a lot of work over the last, oh, what has it been, maybe five years, six, uh, four or five years? Uh, you still there, Jeff? Yes, I am. I, I agree wholeheartedly with, uh, you know, what uh, you know, David said and, and as being part of, you know, part of uh, being an actual witness to the one of the uh, the uh, NWA annual meetings in Nashville and seeing Bob Probich brought in as an executive director, which I think is a, a brilliant move on the NWA's part. Um, you know, and just seeing all that, like I said, unfortunately, I too, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm also bound and gagged by by things I saw and heard. But uh, you know, there's definitely been a, a change in the air as far as the NWA goes, and and. With the uh, the show on colors and and a lot of the shows that the smaller NWA promotions have been able to put on uh, independently uh, themselves on either the internet or local TV stations is uh, really starting to bring the NWA uh, name back into prominence. Um, just let me know. You can check out nwawrestling.com and you can find out uh, where NWA is going to be. You can also find out uh, get, uh, who the champions are, uh, merchandise like T-shirts. And if you're looking for uh, NWA uh, DVDs, you go to bvdvd.com or bigvisionentertainment.com. We'll have all those uh, links up on the website. Yeah, uh, and look- check out your local retailers, too, because I know that we're in Best Buys and Fries and on the East Coast, Strawberries and Coconuts and all those type of locations. They're all there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you, you know, just what Jeff said about this thing coming back, it, it's 
it's been a, 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 a nice passion uh, and something to be passionate about, especially being in the professional wrestling business for 20 years for me now. Uh, I was pretty young when I started and uh, just taking pictures and jackets and whatnot uh, here in the Los Angeles area to what we're doing now has been very gratifying. Are both of you guys going to be at the uh, Fan Fest this year in Charlotte? Well, if the schedule allows, I'll be there. I don't know what I'll, you know, when on my end, with the television and the, uh, this, uh, it, what a difference a year makes, let's say that. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, probably 50 times busier uh, now than I was back then, and I was busy then, too. Um, but if I could attend, I, I sure would be there. It was great meeting those people. Uh, that were there that I didn't know and catching up with uh, others. And I and I do urge uh, the listeners to, if you are in the area, to go out and buy that ticket uh, to the event. Um, it will be great. I believe uh, it's being wrapped around the 25th anniversary of the Midnight Express, so you can't get any better than that. Yeah, that's going to be great. Uh, they're still talking even over on uh, NWALegends.com and their message board. Uh, like uh, Greg Price is asking people, you know, who, who they want to see wrestle Midnight Express for – what they're billing is, uh, it might be like their last match with uh, Jim Cornette as like a group. Wow. So well, that, after what I saw last time, with uh, I believe the main event was uh, Tully Blanchard and uh, Dustin Rhodes. Yep. Yeah, that was a fantastic match. I had a great time watching that. It really took me back to Saturday mornings and, uh, and WTBS. Mm-hmm. And the uh, seeing Rock and Roll Express for Midnight Express, that was like uh, that was like a magical moment in a uh, cornet. It is, and seeing that live is very special. Mm-hmm. Um, since you guys are both here too, I want to ask uh, what you guys thought of uh, Edward Vanderpile. Where do you think he's? Uh... <laughs> what do well, I think I, I, of I, I, Edward Vanderpile? My right. God, let me count the ways. Um, uh, C. Edward Vanderpile, uh, one thing I'll give him is that he's a very smart individual. He's, allow, he's uh, allied himself with some fantastic talent. He's taken them all to championships um, under scrupulous means, no doubt. Uh, but uh, he, he's, he's a very cunning and smart man, especially now negotiating with Nick Bockwinkle to bring him in as an advisor to Adam Pierce. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that that that, that Vanderpile is a uh, is a dumb guy. Uh, his nutrition and uh, and his calisthenics and whatnot need an awful lot of work. I he could put away an awful lot of cheeseburgers and hot dogs. I've seen that, but uh, outside of that, uh, you know, he if if they could just go down the straight and narrow and and, and you know and be on our side, if you want to say that uh, or accept that. Uh, uh, those are my impressions of Seattle Vanderbilt. The guy's very cunning, very smart, and in mo- in the modern day pro wrestling world, you know, will I call him a future legend? Yeah, maybe not to his face. <laughs> That's something definitely missing uh, from like uh, wrestling on TV. You don't get to see the uh, too too many heel managers, and uh, it's always a lot of fun to, to, to get to uh, get to hear get to hear those guys talk. Yeah, he's a goof. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling in, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah. All right. Talk to you later, Jeff. Right. Um, you guys are also got a show coming up here in uh, Twin Rivers uh, Casino. I think that's in. Um, it's only about an hour from me, actually. Well, cool. I hope to see you there. Yeah, we'll be up in the Twin Rivers on the 18th of April. Mm-hmm. That will be a television taping. Uh, we're working on some surprises for up there, and I hope to have some high-profile talent on there. We haven't had that solidified yet um we're also the next night on the 19th we'll be in wildwood new jersey at the uh i think they call it the ocean front arena mm-hmm. um you know and uh outside of the wwe the nwa is the only other company that does as many arena shows uh granted we don't pack it we don't have twenty thousand people in there but what we set the building up for we're very satisfied with the crowds that we're pulling uh, this is our first time uh, with television in the Northeast. Our first arena show was in Lowell, Massachusetts at the Songa Center, and the main event was Christian versus Jeff Jarrett for the NWA World's title. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe two years ago. Don't quote me on that. Um, and that was our first taste in the arena business, and the crowd was pretty well uh, receptive to what we were trying to uh, 
uh, produce. Uh, our objectives were met, and it uh, got us all thinking, well, if we did it there, why not try it everywhere else? And we've been to Las Vegas, and uh, that's kind of been our Madison Square Garden at the Orleans Arena. Uh, there, those DVDs from Big Vision were all shot there. Uh, in Texas has been a wonderful market for us. Uh, and we play an awful lot of buildings that the WWE is in. Uh, luckily, uh, we don't pull the numbers they do because I'm sure somewhere down the line uh, uh, that could be pulled from us in one right. way or another. Uh, but uh, uh, we're, we're very lucky and fortunate to have the people who represent us out there uh, and the way that our business is structured and what our goals and objectives are and how we're meeting them. So uh, if you want a fantastic night of pro wrestling, that's just fun. Come on out on the 18th or 19th uh, in that area. You, I, I guarantee you, you have a good time. And if you see me running around ringside, even if I look frantic, stop me, say hi. It's fine. I don't bite. Okay. Uh, now speaking of rumors a little earlier, we don't give too much away here, I guess, but uh, there's uh, some rumors that a, a big man will be coming into uh, the NWA soon. Well, we don't know. I just know uh, that Bob Trovich is dealing with some major talent that's available. And we're trying to work on the the last quarter of uh, of 08 and going into 09 and what we can do to enhance the television and enhance uh, the high uh, and, and, and and bring in a little more high profile talent. I know that's one of his objectives and trying to create a different type of environment within the competitive world of the NWA. Uh, one of the stats that I got here the other day, because we do keep record of this, I think over 13 or 1400 talents performed in NWA sanctioned events around the world in 07. Mm -hmm. I know I personally was involved with 130 some odd shows around the world. Um, that says a lot. Right. And I don't think people really look into that. They just see the NWA, and all of a sudden they say, oh, it's crap, it's dead, the WCW is what it was, and that's dead too. Shane Douglas spit on it and threw it away, blah, blah, blah. No, folks, we're alive and well. Those numbers speak for themselves. Uh, would you ever want to do uh, an angle with Shane Douglas, uh, you know, based off that? <laughs> Well, one of the more humorous moments during the NWA TNA relationship was when Shane Douglas was an interviewer and backstage he's holding the NWA World Title, saying it's the most prestigious thing on earth. All right, <laughs> I never even thought I never even thought about that actually. I was sitting right next to him, and Scott Demore sitting next to me, and Terry Taylor sitting next to me on the other end. And I look over at Terry and I said, "Well, what you going to do?" <laughs> well, we want to thank you for coming on tonight. We, got, we had you here about an hour. Um, everybody, check. Tell everybody to check out nwawrestling.com and uh, BVD, bvdvd.com. That's, uh, that's a little hard to say there. You can just go yeah, to nnyourheadonline.com. Yeah, we'll have the link up there. But uh, really thank you for coming on tonight. Well, I appreciate it. And, and I do appreciate all the folks out there who uh, tune into us and talk to us. Like I was covering the Vince McMahon Star Ceremony, which uh, portions of that will be seen on the showcase coming up here soon. Uh, we have a special Hollywood edition coming up in about three weeks as we're covering the Vampiro movie premiere uh, oh, tomorrow night. Uh, and, and that's another thing that we're trying to do with our programming is is changing it up a little bit and, and trying to, you know, show a lighter side to what we're doing and a little more human interest and in getting to know the, uh, the, the performers. But uh, while I was out there at the McMahon star thing, um, I was shocked <laughs> uh, of the number of, fans that were there for for Vince who knew who I was. And uh, that says a lot, and especially a metro area like Los Angeles, uh, that people are actually tuning in and watching what we're doing or at least reading about it on the Internet. And speaking of the Internet, I know that a lot of you folks out there um, uh, <laughs> uh, have been coming to the website and have been an awful hard time getting on. Yeah, uh, We're having server problems. They migrated our servers about oh, I want to say three weeks ago, and I don't know what button they hit on their end to just foul everything up, yeah, but we're having an awful hard point. time um, uh, keeping the, 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 the level of traffic and the website working the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's out of our hands, unfortunately, and we're trying to move it to another server this, or, this week or next, but uh, 
bear with us. This is still a work in progress. Excellent. Everybody check out uh, NWA um, Showcase. It's on uh, Colors TV. You can also check it out on the website when it's when it's uh, back up and running uh, properly. And, uh, again, thanks for coming on. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any time you need me to replace Captain Lou Albano, I'll be here. Excellent. <laughs> this is Bob Caudill, and you're listening to In Your Head.